Welcome to Sleepless Readings. Tonight we'll be reading a tale called Every Night My Home Grows Smaller Around Me. My name is Michael. I'm an independent contractor for construction work. You have to help me. Five days ago, I woke up to complete and total darkness. At first, I thought nothing of it, figuring I had simply awoken in the middle of the night. I rolled over, squinting through groggy eyes at the digital clock on my bedside. 10.13 AM. What the hell? I sat up, confusion slowly draining the remains of dreams from my brain. My apartment is on the east corner of an apartment complex. I hadn't set an alarm, this being one of my few days off from work, but the rising sun should have woken me long ago, bleeding through the thick curtains. My hands fumbled blindly around on the bedside table, searching for my phone. The darkness was smothering, all-encompassing. Living in a city, you're always inundated by light, uh, the glow of traffic, streetlights, other houses, but somehow my room was pitch black. Finally, my seeking hands found their mark. I raised my phone, turned on the flashlight, and panned it around the room. Everything was cast in sharp contrast, the edges of shadows jagged and precise. I got up out of bed, walked over to the window, and threw the curtains aside. Stone. From top to bottom, my window was filled with grey, featureless concrete. It was smooth, but solid and set, as if it had been there for days. Is it strange I didn't panic? I don't think so. This was so unexpected, so nonsensical, that it didn't immediately register as something deserving of panic or fear. I simply couldn't comprehend what was happening. All I felt was a distant, dull confusion. I walked over to the next window and opened the curtains. More grey. Panning my flashlight around, I exited the room and entered the kitchen. Still, only confusion. The cheap blinds on the window there went up. More concrete. Now the panic began to set in. I rushed over to the hallway and the entrance door to my apartment. With fumbling hands, I unlocked it and threw it wide open. The door frame was filled from top to bottom with grey concrete. Now finally the panic hit me with full strength. I was walled in, somehow trapped in my own home, with no way out. The thick, smothering blanket of pure terror fell over my mind. I don't know how long I was beyond reason, yelling, crying, cursing, and beating the masonry in senseless, unthinking rage. A noise broke me from my fit, half heard and distant. I fell silent, tears running down my cheeks, listening intently. Had I only imagined it? There it was again, a whisper, so quiet it was barely there, so low I could not make the words out. It was coming from my kitchen. I sprang to my feet and dashed through the apartment, halting in the kitchen and waiting with bated breath. Michael? Michael, can you hear me? The voice, muffled and faint, was coming through the wall itself. I recognized it instantly. Maria, my neighbor. I rushed over to the wall, pressing my head up close to it. Maria, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. The relief in her voice was palpable. What the fuck is going on, Maria? I, I don't know. I woke up in the dark. All of my windows are bricked up. The door as well. There's no way out. I cursed savagely. Fuck. Mine too. Is there any other way out? No, I tried calling for help. My family, the fire brigade, the police. I, I can't reach anyone. H hold on, Maria. I answered. The sound of another human being had forced down my panic, allowing me to think clearly. Thank God. I was not alone. Quickly, I dialed the emergency services number. The bar on the top of the screen showed full signal, and my heart jumped when the beeping of the dialing tone went silent. I had gotten through. Hello? My name is Michael Freeman. I, I am having some sort of emergency. No answer. Hello? Hello? Still nothing. Shit! I swore, hung up, and dialed another number. My brother. Again, the line was picked up. Matt! Matt, are you there? Silence. 
The same with my mother, my father, and several of my friends. The call would be accepted, and then there would be silence. Half an hour of failure later, I collapsed against the wall, defeated. Maria was still on the other side, but we both sat in silence for a while. Finally, I got up. Let's, uh, let's just think about this, I said, almost shouting to make sure Maria would hear me. I should be working tomorrow. You should be at work today. People will notice we're missing. Someone will come looking for us. We just need to hang on tight till they do. How long, Michael? Came the voice from beyond the wall. A few days, uh, at the very most, I promised, hoping my voice sounded more reassured than I felt. People don't just disappear like this without anyone noticing. Go check your supplies for food, water. I'll do the same, and then we'll talk again. We got to work, and spent the next few hours making a detailed list of everything in my apartment that I would need to survive several days alone. While doing so, I also came to realize the electricity, water, and gas were still running. I flipped on all the lights in my house. Their simple yellowed brightness had never been so welcome. Next, I filled my bathtub, sink, and every single bottle I could find with water. At the very least, thirst would not be my downfall. Food was a bit more of a problem. At a normal rate of consumption, I had enough to last me for only about three days. I cursed at myself for putting off stocking up. I would have to ration myself. By the time Maria got back in contact, it was almost 5 p.m. How's it looking on your side? I asked. I have enough water, she answered. The food should last me for about a week and a half if I'm careful. The power hasn't been cut either. Good, good. We just need to stay calm, not do anything stupid, and someone will come find us. I promise. We sat in silence, but my mind was racing. Who could have done this? Why would someone do this? And how? And why was no one answering our calls for help? None of it made sense, and my mind spun at the sheer number of unanswered questions. Was everyone else in the building trapped? My flat only connected to Maria's, being built on the corner of the block. Were all the other residents imprisoned as well? I didn't voice any of my concerns. Maria was a gentle, kind person, and I did not want to burden her with more trouble. If she broke down on me, or got injured, there would be no way for me to help her. Worse still, being separated from my only human contact might be enough for the panic to return. Eventually, I passed out, the exhaustion of the situation overpowering my body's attempts to stay lucid. My dreams were filled with darkness and cold, hard stone pressing in on me from all sides. I awoke to the sound of Maria beating on the wall next to me. Heart hammering, I leapt to my feet. Maria? Maria, what's happening? The, the bricks, Michael. The door. It, it's gotten worse. I ran through my apartment, heading for the entrance hallway. I froze in horror as I realized exactly what Maria had meant. Half the hallway, several meters of space, were now gone. Simply gone. In their place was only cold, hard stone. It was as if the grey mass had simply flowed over and swallowed half the room. What? What the fuck? I yelled. Oh, what the fuck is going on? I dashed through the house, gaze frantically switching left and right, half expecting to see the walls close on me even as I watched, or for concrete to come pouring through the windows like some sort of demented landslide. Maria's voice came through the wall. Michael? She said, her voice somehow calm, soothing. Michael, you have to calm down. Breathe. Just breathe. I sat down on my heels, forcing my racing breath to slow. Gradually, my heart stopped beating so frantically, and a semblance of calm came over me. Uh, did, uh, did you hear anything in the night? I asked, forcing myself to think, to analyze. S someone getting into the house so they could do this? No. Answered Maria. There was no one here, Michael. No one went in. How would they even enter? They'd have to knock the walls down. Then how could this happen? I asked, my head spinning. What is going on? I don't know any more than you do, came the answer. Somehow, Maria was remaining calm, even as the walls of our apartment slowly grew closer and closer. 
I had never expected this inner strength from her. She was a small, fragile looking woman, but disguised underneath was a bravery and resolve that put me to shame. People will have noticed we're missing by now, she said, her voice soothing. By this time tomorrow, we'll be out of here. We spent the day sitting with our backs against the connecting wall, talking about anything that came to our mind. The conversations were banal at best and often nonsensical. We didn't mind. Anything was better than confronting the reality of our situation. As the day dragged on and evening came, my hopes dropped. No one had come to rescue us, despite Maria's words. I forced myself to eat a ration of food, despite my anxiety-clenched throat. As the night wore on, Maria went silent. I knew she had simply fallen asleep, but still I had to force myself not to beat on the wall and call her name to make sure she was alright. Eventually, I too fell into an uneasy slumber, propped up against the wall. The dreams were even worse than the first night, and I woke, breathing heavily, certain I was being crushed alive by walls that moved. I didn't even have time to fully wake up before a fresh wave of dread hit me. A glance through sleep-encrusted eyes had been enough to set the nightmare in motion once again. Oh shit, shit! Across the room from me, I could see the door that led to the hallway, except the hallway was no longer there. Where it had been, there was now only smooth, cold concrete. Shit! Through the wall, I heard Maria gasp, then curse. Maria? Maria, are you alright? I yelled. Did it get worse? Yes. The whole hallway is blocked off. She answered. Michael, my flat is smaller than yours. The room I have now is the only one left. For the first time, a hint of despair had entered her voice. My heart sank. Another panic attack loomed over me, but it was beaten down, crushed by a sudden explosion of fury. We were trapped, imprisoned in our own homes. We were being crushed, day by day, night by night, like the victims of some sort of slow torture device. Someone, somehow, had done this to us, left us alone and cowering. No more. No more. I would not let it end like this. I leapt to my feet with a cry of anger. Michael, what's happening? Asked Maria, concern in her voice. I'm getting you out, you hear me? I yelled. I'm getting you out, and then together we're going to end this fucking nightmare. I rushed through the small flat and into my room. I had a small pile of tools there. Hammers, saws, cables. Running over to it, I pulled out a small sledgehammer. Nothing heavy duty. It could not get me through the heavy, thick concrete which now sealed me off from the outside world. The wall separating me and Maria, though, it, it couldn't be very thick, and it was built from cheap, fragile plaster. I would break through it, save Maria, and then we would find a way out of here. Ignoring Maria's calls of confusion, I rushed back into the kitchen, hefted the sledgehammer, and swung it with all my rage-fueled power. The plaster was cracked. I pulled back and struck again. And again. It was heavy going, but my anger gave me strength. Soon I had cleared a man-sized opening. Beyond was still more plaster and wood. I kept swinging. I paused to get my breath. Michael, are you all right? I could hear Maria through the wall. So close now. One more swing and I would pierce the last layer between us. The anticipation was unbearable. I would finally see another human being in my imprisonment. Somehow, such a simple thing felt monumental. I hacked again, but the blow must not have bitten deep, only tearing away the top layer of the remaining plaster. I swung again and again, certain that any second I would be through. <laughs> How many swings of the hammer did I tell myself would be the last? A dozen? Two dozen? More? How long was I digging, certain I was on the very edge of success? I don't know. Eventually, the horrible truth dawned on me. I turned in my self-wrought tunnel, and my heart fell. I was standing in a long tunnel, far longer than the two walls separating our flats could possibly be. All the time I had been digging, I could have sworn Maria was just centimeters away. Just one swing of the hammer separating us. It was all a lie.
I collapsed to the floor, coughing in the swirling dust of my failed demolition. Maria was silent for a while. When she spoke, it was in a low, defeated voice. You can't get through, can you? She asked, although it was more of an observation than a question. I can hear you. It's like you're centimeters away, so close, and yet you can never get through. There was nothing more to say. No words of support or hope either of us could tell the other. Our hopes had been crushed, destroyed utterly. We sat in silence for several hours. Once I walked back through the tunnel to move my stores of water and food into the room furthest from the advancing concrete. I realized then that it didn't matter whether I was in the passageway or not. I could hear Maria just as well from the kitchen. All my digging had achieved nothing at all, brought me not one step closer to her. That night, the dreams were almost a welcome diversion from the reality I would wake to. When I eventually came to, I found the door of my last room filled with featureless grey stone. I was now effectively restricted to it, with no way to reach the rest of the house. Maria. I cried out to Maria, yeah. but there was no answer. My blood ran cold, the panic threatening to overwhelm me. Running over to the wall, I beat on it, Maria. shouting and cursing. Oh, At first, there was no answer, and I fell to the ground, sobbing. <laughs> then, I heard something. A tapping on the wall, coming from the height of my head as I lay, kneeling in my despair. I listened intently. The sound was coming at intervals, sometimes long, sometimes short. It carried on, repeating, unchanging for hours. I tried calling out, certain this had to be Maria. There was no answer. No voice calling back. Only the tapping. After several hours, the sound became more frantic. The tempo increased, the, the rhythm and repeating intervals collapsing. It changed into a frantic staccato, a desperate drum roll. I yelled and beat the wall in return, but was helpless to intervene. Soon, it became fainter, the impacts growing weaker. Eventually, it stopped altogether. Silence fell. I cried for the death of the only companion I had in my imprisonment. That was yesterday. I think my own end is not far away, either. When I awoke today, it was to pitch blackness, despite having kept all the lights on when I passed out from fatigue. I tried to rise, but found I could not. All around me, there is only stone. I lie on cold brickwork. I cannot lift my head more than a few centimeters. It was only through slow, painful contortion that I could bring my phone to my pocket and to my face so I can squint at its screen. No one will answer me, but perhaps if my initial calls for help could get out, uh, so can this message. Please, help me. My battery is almost empty. When it dies, there's nothing more I can do. I cannot move. I cannot see. I can only beat the walls of my prison in terror. My name is Michael. Please help. Thank you for listening. That was Every Night My Home Grows Smaller Around Me. Don't forget to like the video. It does help to boost the channel. Leave a comment for the algorithm. There's new stories every Sunday. Not to mention the shorts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So subscribe. And ring the bell. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And as always, stay sleepless.